All in favor, sign on. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. She is ready. She is ready. Thank you, uh, to this, uh, for, uh, Thank you for allowing us to deviate this a little bit while you sent that up as well. Well, you're very kind. I appreciate the time. Uh, recently, I believe you had some demonstrators who came and presented some what I consider uh, misconceptions or misinformation to the board, and I'm just here this morning to show you some statistics and uh, show you what is actually happening at the library. So, uh, One of the things that's very important for everybody to understand is that we're, we're an equal opportunity employer. We do not discriminate against any of our employees uh, or potential employees. Uh, we've had a long record of uh, equal opportunity hiring. Uh, Carolyn McCallum, the previous library director, was one of the first African-American librarians in the state. And certainly Charlotte Moman, who has been integral to these hiring processes, both of them have done an excellent job. Uh, the ratio of black to white employees when I came was 66% to 33 since I've been hiring, uh, it's now 75 to 25 percent. So we certainly are not discriminating in our hiring processes. All our hiring decisions are made by a committee of three persons, myself and two other employees who are black. And a veto by any one of the three uh, means that the person isn't hired. So uh, Charlotte Moman and Burnett Nichols, uh, the HR person, uh, I depend on them very heavily in hiring decisions. We value our employees. We want their experience to be a very positive one. Charlotte Moman, the Assistant Director of Public Services, is in charge of all the branch staff scheduling. She approves the schedules every week. We want all our employees who work eight hours to earn their uh, one hour lunch and two 15 minute breaks. Uh, I can tell you I'm pretty insistent upon that, and uh, if uh, Ms. Moman is aware that someone isn't getting their breaks, then all she has to do is make uh, the HR director and myself uh, uh, aware of it, and we'll certainly work with her to, to get that fixed. We offer staff training three times a year. Previously, uh, customer service, tra service training was the only training that was offered to anyone. And all staff had to take it, and they did this uh, quarter after quarter, year after year. They really weren't training in much except customer service. And since I've been there, I've tried to make sure that the federally required training in directory workplace, sexual harassment were offered, and of course, we're working on anti-bullying and safety training. Safety training is so important. Uh, customer service training is still uh, required for all new employees, and anyone at this moment thinks uh, needs it. The library grievance process is available to everyone. Uh, the only thing we ask is that the agreed person make the, uh, go ahead and make the grievance on their own behalf. Uh, the individual who was here and spoke to you was trying to make grievances on behalf of other people and our board attorney just won't let me allow that under our policy. We certainly have a complaint procedure. Anyone is certainly welcome to complain and I deal with all complaints promptly. Uh, we do have some good news at the library. When I came, uh, one of the reasons that the board uh, wanted to hire someone with a technology background was so that we could advance the technology at the library. We had an aging server that was in a programming language that couldn't be easily updated. No more, uh, uh, no more advances were being made, so we migrated that this year to a state-of-the-art Oracle system. We have a service option that allows anyone to communicate with the company and immediately uh, tweak things that need fixing. Coming on February 15th, and this is a project we're very proud of, we have a new state-of-the-art catalog, online catalog, that's coming out. It's going to appeal to all ages, but particularly to young users. It has a Google-like uh, search interface and social media integration. And we'll have uh, email and text message delivery for library overdues and holds. And we're even planning on sending out a two-day uh, pre-overdue notice to let you know your books are coming due in two days. I think that's going to be very popular. Uh, when I came, the auditor's report to the library was uh, did include some recommendations for improvements in what we do at the branch libraries. We are writing all of our, uh, our cash transactions down by hand. 
And it was very possible that the cash could have been diverted. So I thought it was very important that we have some accountability. So we have a new point of sale cash management system that's coming in April. The system will allow uh, credit card payment both in person and online. And it will also tighten that uh, internal control because we'll be getting uh, reports from the system every single day when the branch manager is wrapping up the day. We also, and this is very exciting, we'll have a new website soon. Uh, I love Miss Welty, but that is not the most attractive picture of her that I've ever seen. And our website has been the same since 1998, I understand. So this change is very much needed, and we hope to have that new system up and running uh, in May, if not before. Other projects that we're working on have uh, been uh, working with the Jackson Public Schools on an initiative so that when a child registers for school, we want to see the parent who's there also get a library card for that child. So I've been meeting with the school system, and we hope to have that uh, in the works by spring. Uh, we want to have online library card sign-ups so that you can go online and, and enter your information and this, then come by the library and pick up your library card. Uh, we hope next year to have online meeting room reservation, online library event reservation, and online reservation for the summer reading program, as well as a virtual online summer reading program. You know, the library has to change with working parents. They don't have time to bring the child. Most of them work, and a lot of kids are missing out on a very valuable summer reading program. So we hope to have a virtual online uh, version of it so that uh, kids can participate uh, at home by computer and uh, in the evening or whenever they can log on to enjoy the summer reading program. Uh, I was able to visit all 15 library branches within the first six weeks I was here. I did an in-depth uh, maintenance and safety concern survey of those branches. Uh, I found that there were five city libraries that had extensive roof leaks. Uh, we had buckets in the ceiling. When I asked the employees, how long have these buckets been in the ceiling? They said, 2008. And I said, 2008? This is not good. There was mold in the building. The Dora Welty Library had uh, quite a mold infestation. And uh, so I worked with the city, and we were able to get the five libraries, Medgar Evers, Charles Tisdale, uh, Richard White, uh, Fannie Lou Hamer, and Eudora Welty, uh, dried in with a temporary dried in roof, and uh, crews came into the library to perform extensive cleaning with biocides. Uh, we hired Servpro to do some work at Eudora Welty. And I can tell you that the libraries, all five of them, smell better, the employees and the patrons are much happier, and these libraries are in much better condition. The city will be coming in later, we hope, uh, within the year, to have uh, permanent roof uh, repairs and replacement done. Uh, we had two exciting uh, disasters this year uh, since I've been here. We had a, a devastating flood in the Byron Library that put four inches of water on the floor when they came on Monday and opened the door. The water just came cascading out of the building. Uh, we had to recover from that one, had to close the library for, for about a week. Uh, we were able to do that, and we had a sewage flood at the Eudora Welty Library that came about when one of our patrons flushed a pair of boxer shorts down the sewer lines, and that went about 40 feet and backed up sewage into the meeting room offices, the kitchen, in the meeting room. It was quite a mess, and it took us uh, almost two months to clean up from that. I can tell you it's all been cleaned up and repaired, and the restrooms have never looked better. The library carpets had not been cleaned in uh, the three largest libraries, Willie Morris, Eudora Welty, and Quisenberry, uh, for I don't know how long this photo is from Quisenberry, so those uh, carpets have all been cleaned, and we have a systematic program now where all library branches will have their carpets cleaned at least one time a year and more often if needed. Uh, this is a photo of a very exciting project that we've been working on with the West Side Senior Group. You know, they needed a place to meet, and uh, funds were not available to build a meeting place for these seniors, so we adapted our Golden Moore Library, and you can, this is a picture of the actual furniture that was purchased for there. Uh, this is special furniture that breaks down the tables tilt, they stack together, and this allows the branch manager and the staff at the library to clear the room so that in the morning we can have a head start uh, story time. 
then the seniors will be there from 11 to 3.30. And when they're finished, we can then rearrange the room for the teens to come in in the afternoon. So I'm very proud of this project. And uh, I believe they're also going to be doing meals on wheels out of the library meeting room. And we're very happy to partner with that group. Uh, we addressed a lot of safety concerns at the branches. We had three locked fire exit doors at Tisdale, two of them in the teen center. So we immediately got push bar doors in there, uh, and we're doing regular inspections to make sure that we don't ever have locked fire doors. Uh, we've had unsafe entrance doors in the door well team. Uh, don't have many people in uh, wheelchairs or on walkers come through those doors because it's just scary. So uh, we worked with the company, and we should have those replaced in the next three weeks, we hope. Uh, I found in my inspection that there were lots of electrical closets that people had put books and papers in. That was pretty universal in all the branches. So we're working on getting all those cleaned out. And a lot of out-of-date out fire extinguishers have been updated as well. Uh, liability issues have been addressed as well. Um, we had an amazingly high amount of workers' comp cases. In fact, it was almost impossible. We had 39 firms. We asked a bid on workers' comp, and we only got one bid. So I put a new policy in place that uh, says that uh, we have to be very careful about who's lifting things. And uh, uh, we worked with our workers' comp insurance company to make sure that that, that number is going to be go going down rapidly. Uh, we also have asked uh, Charlotte Bowman to work with me on a comprehensive safety plan. Uh, I found out that there were no evacuation routes posted in the libraries and that they hadn't had fire drills in uh, quite a while, like six years. And so she's going to be working with me to put those safety drills in place and make sure that the evacuation routes are posted in all libraries. We also had a shooter in the library training session for uh, our staff, and one would like to think that it couldn't happen in a library, but if it's happening at malls and everywhere else, I think we have to be prepared. So we're trying to give our, um, our staff uh, instructions on what to do and also what to do in the event of fires and tornadoes uh, at the library. Uh, we've been developing our renovation, repair, and refurbishment plans for our uh, three libraries that need it the most, which are Richard Wright, Charles Tisdale, and Eudora Welty. Eudora Welty is 28 years since they put the furniture in the building, and the building is really dilapidated. The furniture is so low that most senior adults can't get out of it. They, once they get in the chair, they can't get up. Uh, our children's area there has no furniture for children, uh, all the furniture is for adults. And uh, in general, the building just really needs to be refurbished. And here's some circulation figures about how uh, our circulation has dropped dramatically at the Dora Welty Library. It was 104,000 in 2003, and this past year it dropped to 53,000. And we have to look. Uh, we have a lot of people who are just missing that are no longer coming to Dora Welty. We certainly haven't seen anyone in wheelchairs. The blind and hearing impaired are not there because our buildings are not ADA compliant. <coughs> We're not seeing young families with children, toddlers, and juveniles uh, have pretty much dropped off. About all we get are daycare centers now coming in for story time. We have no teen area, no place for teens and tweens. Uh, the senior adults and elderly population has dropped dramatically. And we're just not getting many adults who are living and work, working downtown coming into the wealthy library. So we do have a plan, and the library board will be addressing that uh, this next board meeting on Wednesday. And I did want you to know that uh, we do serve the homeless. It's something I take very seriously. Um, my husband is a minister, and when we were in seminary uh, in New Orleans, uh, we regularly volunteered at the Brantley Center. Uh, I really care about the homeless, and uh, the library does serve their needs. And anybody that tells you that the homeless can be barred from a public library does not know library law. They cannot be barred from a public library. Uh, in the library that you have, which you can be very proud of, we have a conduct code that is not based on a person's appearance in any way. Unless you do something that's on our list of things that are unacceptable, such as smoking in the building, or if you're inebriated in the building, uh, you're welcome to stay. We do not have a policy at all that would ever exclude the homeless, nor would it be legal. 
In fact, this past December, at uh, my invitation, the library staff voluntarily contributed over 100 items of uh, glove, hats, shoes, coats to the Gateway Mission for the Homeless, and we donated a large amount of food from staff training dinner to Grace Place. So uh, we take our responsibility to serve the homeless pretty seriously. We do offer an employment lab for anyone who needs help finding a job, and we have several homeless people who have uh, found jobs as a result. We offer hot coffee on cold mornings and even have a movie matinee that we have planned uh, largely for adults who have a lot of time on their hands. And I just wanted to, to end by saying that I don't agree with the person who was here who said that public libraries are just for one group of people. If you have a laptop or a computer at home, great. That doesn't mean that you don't want to participate in the public library system because tax money that supports the public library is contributed by every social class, every type of person. And every person who gives tax money should have the right to expect that there's something in the library system to serve them. Every library customer deserves a clean, up-to-date public library that has comfortable seating and that has library materials that have appeal to every age group and interest. So uh, we're working hard at the library to make sure that everybody's welcome and that we are staying absolutely up to date, that our buildings are put in good order, that you're not going to be faced with liability suits. Because after all, the buildings do belong to you. And if someone's injured in the library building that belongs to the county, then you will be sued. So I'm working very hard to make sure that that doesn't happen. Thank you, Mr. Sam, for, for your uh, information that you've given us, Supervisor Stokes. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Ms. Furr, in terms of this new furniture, we follow the new process. Well, library furniture is actually available only from two different vendors in the state, uh, Glenn Norton Associates and Library Interiors. Uh, we do have uh, library uh, state contract prices. Yes, we have followed very carefully the bid process. If something is not on state contract, then it is bid out uh, to three different sources. We are very particular about state contract and about the bidding laws. Uh, I will tell you that library furniture is not like regular office furniture. Office furniture is made to last from between five and 10 years. Library grade furniture is more expensive, but we, we expect it to last 25 to 30 years. So it is more expensive. It's only available through certain companies. And also, I'll tell you that uh, Library Interiors, the company that we use, they were paid $10,000 by the city of Jackson to uh, take the Sears store and turn it into a library. And they worked for every single other library director that's, that's been with uh, Jackson Heinz Library System. So they're a supplier that's, uh, that's well known and well respected. Every other library, public library, and academic library in the area uses them. One of the reasons is they can give us design uh, services such as changing the layouts, uh, maintaining ADA compliance, and those design uh, features are very important. So we're looking at a completely different space needs plan for Belty Library and large leads with the help of a library designer from library interiors. So the answer is yes, that we are father. Oh yes, yes, always. Secondly, you did come from Hancock County, is that correct? Yes. Did you give a recommendation from Hancock County? Did I what? Did we give a recommendation from Hancock County? Uh, I don't know that the library board ever asked for one. I did have a recommendation from the uh, uh, from an alderman from the city of Waveland, and the board thought that was really uh, kind of neat because they'd never seen a politician recommend a library before. Did we get a recommendation from Hancock County? If yes. so, can we get a copy of it? Uh, I was the chair of the search committee, and we did. Can I get a copy of it? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Supervisor Frank. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Frank, my question deals with the satellite office at the Jackson Mall and possibly a satellite office at the Metro Center. Uh, where are you in uh, terms of uh, planning or implementation um, as it relates to those two properties? I hope to have the contract with the Metro Center Mall signed today. We're opening up the Metro Center or? Metro Center Mall signed today. We're opening up a Friends of the Library bookstore location, and I hope that we can turn it into a 
full-scale uh, library branch within the next three to six months. So we feel like that it would be a good, uh, a good fit for the library because we would be attracting a lot more people to come to the mall. And the mall has a wide variety of people coming through that would enjoy using the computers and checking out books. So we're doing feasibility studies. We're also looking at the feasibility of uh, transferring um, uh, the Fannie Lou Hamer branch, which is in the Golden Age Retirement Center, to the Jackson Medical Mall. I met with uh, the folks at the Medical Mall twice now and looked at a space there. Uh, the Golden Key Retirement Center, the library is so small and we're really limited. We can't offer evening or Saturday hours there and it's difficult for families to get in. So we think that the uh, Jackson Medical Mall and the folks at the Medical Mall are pretty happy about the idea that we could perhaps move the uh, branch there. I hope it works out. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, presenting the information to the Thank you. Administrator Davis. Thank you. Next on the agenda is um, a budget.